I've got Patrick Fingles on. Patrick's the, the CEO of Leap and New Look. And so as CEO of New Look Home Design, he has a lot of experience in you know, it's choosing different software and uh, you know, solving for different needs within the business. And uh, as Patrick will talk about, it wasn't uh, um, you know, just piling on, it was choosing software that actually solved business needs and just taking it one step at a time. Uh, so I'm really excited to have uh, Patrick talk to us. Um, if you're not familiar with Leap and you're joining us for the first time, you know, Leap's a digital point of sale application for, for contractors. Uh, it's helping them digitize their entire in-home sales process. Uh, so estimates, contracts, proposals, uh, storing sales presentations, videos, links, PDFs, uh, allow you to facilitate financing from within the home and ultimately close the deal so that as a sales rep, you can move on to the next your next appointment and close that. Uh, so with that, Patrick, I'm going to uh, hand this over to you so we can jump right into things. I know you have a lot to share with us. Really appreciate you being on with us. So thank you. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Here we go. Let me show my screen. You guys see that mug? Yep, yeah. looks good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for having me. Sorry I'm that better looking guy, but uh, that's what you get. Anyway, uh, listen, you know, as always, you know, this is, you know, this is, this is predicator comes from a place of one person's opinion. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm confident about things. I'm confident about the decisions that I make, uh, but I do understand that they, they're, they're birthed from my experiences. Uh, uh, education, what other people are doing, um, and then my own opinions on top of it. So, you know, some of what I say you might agree with, some of what I say you might disagree with, uh, and that's okay. Uh, my hopes is that everybody takes a couple key pieces of information away from this, and that would be an effective use of time. So I'll try to keep this uh, pretty quick so everybody can get back to their day and, and get back to selling deals and installing jobs. So, um, let me just... Little technical difficulty. Here we go. All right. So, in a sea of software, where do I start? And that's really the question. And look, I'm hit with them too. You know, as they alluded, I own a New Look, which is a large scale exterior remodeler, and I own Leaf. And so, with both businesses, I'm getting hit on both sides uh, with all the different softwares that are out there. So, how do I kind of evaluate my needs? And the trick that I've learned and the way that I do it is I, I try not to stare at the softwares that are in front of me and try to find a place for them in my business. I actually work backwards from the business to find the software that I need. So if you break your business down, and I know that this slide's a little complicated, but it's, it's, it's actually a really good slide. If you break your business down and you think about a business from the ground up and how it functions, and you have these kind of sectors within the business or these little silos within the business, and you say, okay, what softwares are available to, to support those silos? So let's talk about it. The, you know, if you look here, you have in, employee resources, right? So as soon as you hire somebody, you're gonna have employees, right? You're gonna have training, you're gonna have onboarding, you're gonna have performance management, you're gonna have maybe benefits, you're gonna have pay stubs and all the burden that comes with that. So you have that whole employee sector. So there's softwares out there to support that like Paycom and ADP. Right. If you go over and you say, OK, look, there's field management. Right. So I have my guys. They're out in the field. They're 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 installing the jobs. There's going to be field management and communication softwares, a base camp and leap or good logos for that. They both provide that service. You come over and you say, OK, let's look at sales. Right. So I'm going to be selling, uh, you know, every place that you go and you purchase something. There's a point of sale software. There's a place I can put my credit card in. Right. So you end up with a product like uh, a leap again. And then they're selling support softwares. Um, maybe you want to uh, offer a satellite measurement. Maybe you want to offer a financing, you know, program, um, a, you know, credit card processing. You know, so how does that whole kind of point of sale transaction happen? So as soon as you start selling, now you have employees, you have your field management, you, you know, you have your selling support. Well, then comes customers. And there's a host of customer uh, softwares out there, customer management softwares, Job Nimbus, Salesforce, Market Sharp, right? So these are industry softwares that are available that literally just manage the customers uh, uh, segment. Then there's accounting. When you look at your accounting, so now you have customers, so they're going to be paying you. Do I have to pay taxes on it? I have employees now. I have payroll. So there's products out there like QuickBooks and Sage, and some of you guys use this. There's marketing. 
right? So you have marketing, you might have HubSpot, you might have Pardot, you might have something a little more elementary, like a MailChimp, you're just doing some email campaigns. There's inventory management for some of you. We don't really have a big inventory management, but maybe you have supplies and you need something to say, okay, how many um, units of this do I have? How many units of that do I have? And then there's like internal communication as well. So you have in com internal communication and that would be like, you know, how do we communicate with somebody? We're going to use, uh, is our primary form of communication with employees going to be email? Or are we going to bring in like Slack? Are we going to bring in Basecamp or GroupMe or some sort of text feature that we can utilize? So when you look at your business and you kind of break your business down into these silos and you say, okay, great. Now, how, how are these silos within my business functioning? And, you know, where can I gain efficiencies? I think, you know, that one of the mistakes people make is they look around for something that's broken. And I don't think you're supposed to look around for something that's broken. I think you're just supposed to look at these constantly and say, okay, how can we make them more efficient? How are we gonna change them from the way we were doing it two years ago to the way that we're doing it today? And what is doing this gonna look like, you know, two or three years from now? So, you know, um, and you really look at the softwares as a support. Once you, kind of find out where you think you need optimization or you need increased performance, then you can find the softwares that are available to you within those spaces, right? So you're like, yeah, listen, I, I definitely want to bring in somebody, uh, you know, our, our, for employee resources, right? I mean, we're doing payroll manually, right? So we're going to go and we're going to put our ear to the ground. We're going to ask around, what are people using? It's not going to take long for companies like ADP and Paycom to make it to your doorstep. You're going to be having conversations with them and you're going to be implementing them right um you know our the way we're measuring is just not working there's too many inaccuracies we sold another job it was below minimum on a roof you know i think we really should look at eagle view and hover you know so you you you, you go out and you 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 know you'll get demos from both of them and you'll bring them in so it's really about understanding where the needs are in your business and you know and, and identifying the software that needs to go uh, that, that can complicate, uh, com uh, sorry, complement that need. The biggest thing that you take away from this, though, is that the idea that one software uh, that's supposed one software won't do it all, or one software will do it all, throw that out the window. Okay, so it's not you're not going to find one software to do it all. There's not some you know what software should we implement? And I you know I get that a lot from people. You know. Um, we, well, we don't know if it's just the right software for us. Well, of course, you know, a, a point of sale software or a selling software is not going to solve your production woes. You know, um, now there's companies that might advertise to that degree that one software does it all. But I promise you, if you talk to companies that use that software, they're using lots of other bolt-on softwares to go along with it, right? We're all using Microsoft. We're all using MailChimp. You know, nobody's using their satellite measurement provider to do their contracts. Right. It just doesn't work like that. So that notion kind of goes out the window. So, you know, the question then becomes is how do you evaluate your options? Like, yeah, I could use software upgrades in all these. There's 10 of them. Where do I start? And I really look through three lenses when I do this. The first and foremost, the easiest lens to look through is follow the path blazed by the industry. Right. So like, you know, when settlers went out west. They didn't like create a new path every time. They followed the path that made sense. So if you keep your ear to the ground and just take a look at what everybody's doing, competitors are doing, then you'll kind of file, follow suit on that, right? So everybody's using these products that are out there. You're not using them. And you're trying to evaluate whether you need them or not. Well, you know, if, if I'm walking down the street and everybody's got their umbrellas off and I'm just not getting wet yet, I'm going to start to wonder if I, if I should have an umbrella, right? I, I, I think that everybody knows something maybe that I don't. So, you know, it's, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to overthink it. You know, everybody's using these 10 products within the industry. We're not using them. So let's get them implemented. So now you start saying, okay, let's look at the effort versus impact. And you can do it a couple of ways. So one, you can knock out the easy ones first. If there's something that you can implement, maybe something that's more of a little bit of a transactional software, something like a hover or an Eagle view, or, you know, uh, something that just makes your business easy it's not it's not very robust you don't have to onboard it but you can start implementing your business you can knock it out in two days and you can pick up efficiencies in some place within your business you can evolve a process within your business well great that's a simple decision do those ones really quick because they don't take a lot of thought they don't take a lot of effort and they're easy to implement into the business 
Once you get past that, then you have to start saying, okay, let's look at the area of greatest need. And when you look at the needs, you're going to look at kind of three, these are the three kind of places that I look within those. So one is cost savings, right? So is there, is there an area where we're spending much time, spending too much time, we're spending too much resource, we're making too many errors, right? So, you know, like I said, I gave the analogy of like a mismeasurements or something like that. I mean, that, that will drive, you know, one or two mismeasurements might cost you you know, the whole, the, the cost of the software for the whole year. So you, you just at a boiling point with something. You're like, there's too many, this is too error ridden. I don't want to do it like this anymore. That's what softwares do is their gut check, right? They create a redundancy in the process, right? Um, and they, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, they, they create efficiencies. The second thing that you look at is revenue generating. I mean, obviously cost savings and revenue generating. There's two ways to make a dollar. You can go out and you can earn one or you can save one. So bullet one talks about saving a dollar. Bullet two talks about generating a dollar. So if there's some way that you can implement a software that will increase your closing percentage or, um, you know, um, increase your, um, your, your customer referrals, you know, or anything like that, just increase your efficiency, increase your cost per sale, uh, you know, uh, give you more value in your, in your selling story, then, you know, those are really good softwares because they're going to bring money to the bottom line. And then one that I think is missed is increased employee and customer satisfaction. It's probably the lowest on the list, but it probably shouldn't be. It doesn't save us any money and it doesn't increase our results, but it makes our employees happier and makes our customers happier. You know, uh, you know, I, I'm a big proponent of that. I think, you know, if you keep your employees and customers in the forefront, uh, you know, then you'll you'll have more success than if you don't. So a lot of softwares, you won't you'll you'll be hard pressed to justify a cost savings or revenue generating. But maybe it makes your employees' day more efficient. Maybe it makes them feel better about what they're doing, or maybe it provides your customer a better experience. Maybe you already sell all the jobs that you need to sell, and you do a really good job, and your customers love you. But if I can do something or use a software that makes them feel even better about the service that I'm providing, why would I stop? Because I already got the sale? You know, I mean, my employee's pretty happy. I took them over here, I took them over there. I mean, it doesn't matter. You're always trying to do a better job in those two areas. So those are kind of the three lenses that I like to look through um, when doing this. Here's the biggest thing. Uh, so we've, you know, just in this first two, uh, first two or three slides, we've learned a lot. One, we've learned that, you know, I have eight, nine sectors within my business where there could potentially be softwares to add. You know, now I have to think about, you know, what softwares I want to add. And most importantly, you know, I'm not really super tech savvy, right? Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not great at, it, right? And we get that uh, a ton. We get that I, you know, tech is not my thing. I'm not good at it. And most of the time that comes from people that have put little to no effort into trying. So I always tell a quick, I'll tell, I'll try to tell as fast as I can, like a quick story is it's really funny. People that say, and I, I always use this on, 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 I tell my kids this all the time because they, they always say they can't do something. Um, people that say that they're not good at something are actually probably pretty good at anything they put their mind to because they have the understanding that they're not good at. People that are really terrible at something somehow are kind of blind to the fact that they're terrible at it. We'll take like a cook. That's a great example. Like people think they're a really good cook, but their food is terrible. There's no helping them because they don't even realize they're bad at it. But somebody that cops out and says, you know, I'm just not a good cook. It's like, or have you just put little to no effort into becoming a good cook? Because if you know you're not good at something, then you can go out and you can read and you can learn and you can educate yourself on it. So you can get better at it. So you know, tech is not rocket science. It's, you know, you either use the excuse that you don't feel like messing with it or just go get good at it. There's, there's no in between. I mean, running a business is what's hard. Implementing a piece of software into the business is a piece of cake. Finding customers every day and employees and generating revenue. And that's the, that's the part of life that's hard. Not using a satellite measure tool or a point of sale software or a customer management tool. That's easy as pie. Right. So sometimes the antiquated way or the archaic way that we're doing something, you know, keeping files in a folder and and handwriting everything, that's that's challenging. That's that's harder. 
than it is to learn how to implement the tech. It's more a preconceived notion by people that they're not tech savvy at something. They're not not tech savvy. That that should be thrown out the window. The notion is that you just really haven't tried hard yet. So, you know, number one is understand where you want to advance your business. Two, understand what softwares are available in those spaces. Three, understand how to prioritize them. And then four, most important of all, is know that you can do it, right? You can put your mind to it. You can knock it out. So, you know, don't, don't utilize that. Don't use this as an excuse that I'm not tech savvy. Don't ever say the words. If, if say anything, be like, I don't like tech and I don't feel like messing with it. I'm lazy in that retrospect. Because that's what tech's not tech savvy means. So once you've, you know, you've evaluated, you say, look, I like all these softwares. That's why I'm on this, this webinar. I want to learn how to use softwares. I can use softwares in all these things. How do I transition them into my current process? And the most important thing is you just, you don't stop the train. Somebody told me a while back, it was um, that you, uh, you know, you'll have to work on one train while you're running the other train. And I think that that's the biggest thing. People look at process change, like, hey, we're going to implement this new software into our selling process, or we're going to implement a new software into the way that we do something. So we're going to stop doing it one way, and we're going to start doing it another way. Right. And that's not it. It's it's more of an evolution. You don't you're not stopping something and starting something. No, you're going to continue to do it the same way. It's like, oh, well, on September 1st, we're going to stop handwriting estimates and we're going to start using a digital sales platform to create estimates. No, 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 no. You don't you don't even think that far down the train. You don't even go down there. You're like, we want to bring a digital selling tool in. So I'm going to get some demos. All right, next step is I'm going to buy it. I'm going to sign up for a license. And then you figure out organically the best way to implement the software. But you don't stop your business. You can't wait until there's a time. A lot of people will say something like, well, we're going to do it in fourth quarter when we have more time. There's never more time. You can't, when, if you have more time than fourth quarter, you should be thinking about how to generate revenue. Not implement software. You just, you fold things in. You don't think about the finish line. You think about the starting process. You say, hey, next, I want to implement a selling software. When will I have time to do that? I have no idea. Well, where do I start? I want to get a demo on a product. Well, when do you have time to do that? I could do that next week. Okay, great. Then do that. All right, I really like this one. There's no reason our business shouldn't be using it. I'm going to sign up for it. Well, when can you do that? Well, I could do that tomorrow. All right, we'll do that. All right, now you own this thing. All right, well, now we got to get some training on it. Well, when do we have time to do that? Well, I could give an hour or two next week. And that's how it happens. It's not like, hey, in fourth quarter, four months from now, I know I'm going to have a month that's going to be really slow for me. And I'll be able to dedicate seven hours a day to implementing something into my business. It'll never happen. And the people that aren't using technologies, that's why they're, they're not, not using it because they don't think it's effective. They're not using it because they don't have the time to do it. That's the number one thing we get is we don't have the time to do it. Of course you don't. And you never will because you're a good business owner. But you do have the time to get the demo. Then you have the time to sign up. Then you have time to work on it for an hour or two next week. And that's what you do. And you slowly fold it in. <clears throat> the challenge is not the ability to implement the software. It's wanting to do it. Right. And that's what we're talking about. So it's like, no, I, I want the software. OK, great. So get it right. Some some quick, low hanging things that you can do is one, when you're implementing softwares, everybody looks at the product. Right. And I think the product is really important. But also look at the vendors that are willing to go above and beyond and provide that roadmap for roadmap for assisted onboarding. You might have two vendors. One of them might literally be willing to fly to your location and train your representatives for you. You don't have time to do it. Great. That checks that box. One of them might do it in entirely assisted onboarding. Another software might require you finding a third party company to come in and, and, and optimize the software for you. So really look for what, what does the vendor provide? I mean, you're onboarding their software one time. They're onboarding it potentially thousands of times. So if anybody is the expert in onboarding it, it's them. So there are, there are and, and they're not all created equal in this, companies that provide a handheld 
very assisted, very rigid, help you set timelines. What are those small milestones? An organic plan for each customer. You know, those are great providers that can do that. Not everybody does it, but some do. And that's an easy place to start. It might help you make your decision. Understand your bandwidth and set reasonable timelines. I mean, I already touched on that. It's not, you're not going to look for a block of time. You're going to say, okay, I want to implement a software into doing this to help with this. First thing I do is identify some logos. I already know three that are competitors or friends or, 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 or you know, I, through networking, I know I'm going to schedule demos with them. I can do one next week, one the week after, one the week after. Okay, great. Then I'm going to pick one. You just set reasonable timelines. I'd like to have all the demos done by next month. I'd like to have the, uh, the software. I'd like to have a, a one user where I'm actually tooling around. I've purchased it by the following month. And you don't need to know what the end goal looks. You don't even need to know what the finish line looks like because your day is constantly thrown into, you know, um, I can't think of what I want to say. It's thrown into disruption, right? I mean, you don't know what's going to happen, you know, two months from now when you're planning on going live with the software. It might take you four months. It's got to be an organic timeline. Understand the time versus the value. Don't worry about perfection. A lot of people do that. They'll hold the software and they won't implement it or get the staff using even a piece of it because they're so worried about perfection that they don't realize that they could be getting value out of the software much sooner. It's like we try to do this whole big transformational change. Like we're doing it totally archaic. Now we want to go to Ninja level 10. And it's like, no, I mean, you know, you onboard the software. If there's a piece or two that you can start using it, start using them, you know, um, with Leap personally, a lot of times for us, you know, you can use the software much faster, but a lot of people want to go through like a pricing audit. They want to get everything perfect before they start using it. And while we complement that and, and we understand that, you know, look, I mean, you could be getting benefit out of it while you're doing that. And it'd be better than what you're currently doing, even if it's not in a perfect state. So it's about understanding, getting in, and trust me, I'm going to show you guys some of the logos that we've onboarded um, in, 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 in the business. And I'm telling you, we thought we even had them perfect. And then, you know, over the course of the trailing 90 days after a go live date, there's like several iterations of change that happen. So you have to, you have to level set there. Um, <laughs> the money means nothing when the value is there. It's, it's, there's something in business that's called a net return. And the net return on something is when you spend a dollar in your business, Will it have a net return? Will it decrease cost someplace else? Sometimes with certain softwares, it's hard to even measure. I mean, you look at it as a hard expense and you never step back and say, what would happen if I lost the software? Once you implement it and it's in your business and you think about what would happen if you lost it, then you can start talking about the value of it. But people never do that. People talk about the value of it when they're purchasing it, when they're buying it. Um, and mistakes will happen. Be prepared to be patient. Allow yourself and employees to become comfortable. That's what I said. I mean, you have to import, you have to onboard it almost with a lackadaisical style of effort. Hey, we're going to bring this in. You know, we have a rough timeline. We'd love to be using it by year end, but we'll see how things go. Um, we're going to start to uh, uh, work on it. And, you know, we'd like some people that want to try it. Uh, tell us what your feedback, what mistakes did you make? Maybe roll it out to a couple people first. That way you're doing your old process and your new process. You can figure out what's working, but you have to do it in almost a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a not lackadaisical, but you just have to get your context right. It has to be one of change and growth and evolution and that it's not going to be perfect or else you get people that are frustrated with technology. They don't know how to use it. You harp on them on mistakes because you brought them into the room and you trained them three times on it and they're still screwing it up. You can't, you can't harp on that. You just, you always have to go back to what would be happen if we weren't using it at all? Like it's nothing is perfection, right? Nothing is ever perfect. So you always have to go, you know, you always are looking at current state. Well, you have to always go back to previous state, the level, expe it's, uh, level expectations for yourself. <clears throat> you know, th this is the, the people think change should be simple really because they put so much time into thinking about what to change that when they actually make a decision to drive change in their business 
they're thinking that um, it should be so simple uh, because they put so much energy into it. They put more time and energy into trying to figure out what to change than the actual execution against the change. So that's the thing. You do a lot of research. You get on a lot of webinars. You think about a lot of technology. You do a lot of demos. You do a price negotiation. You buy this thing, and it's all downhill from there. That's not the way it works. It's all uphill from there. That's the easy part. Hey, 50% of my competition is using this software. They're, they're, they're doing demos all the time. We're not. I'm bringing it in. That's a no-brainer. The hard part is going to be getting my team to use it effectively and transitioning into the business. That's going to be hard. All too often, people put a lot too, a lot of too much energy into finding what they want to do. They sign up for the software, and then they want it to be all downhill after that. Like, this shouldn't be this hard. And no, that's not the case. So again, you need to understand where the, the allocation of effort needs to go. The allocation of effort needs to go to the onboarding, the training, and then the post management, the follow-ups on it. How can we do better? How can we do better? How can we utilize more of the software, right? Depending on how robust it is, right? How can we even get better in it? How can we take it to the next level? The software providers all know this and they, they pacify us as customers. You know, they know that they try to get you using a little piece of it, then they let you get comfortable, then they come back and they use another one, but they got to kind of sell you on it. Well, you know, I get to talk from both sides because one, with Leaf, I understand that we're doing that on this side. But as a customer, I understand that I want that on this side. But in selling both sides of it, you know, it's 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 humbling because you realize that you know these software providers are trying to drag you across the finish line when really you should be driving across it. You know, I mean, they're trying to tell you the benefit of it and trying to convince you that we should be using it when really we should be saying, hey, we're, we want to get it implemented. You know, we have very reasonable timelines. We know it's going to be challenging. We know there's going to be some frustrations. We're going to make some mistakes. We'd like to use 10 or 20%, get that going. Then we're going to come back to you excited on how we can get it even further optimized and use more of it. Like, that's what we should be saying because it sounds right. But, you know, we're, we're not necessarily saying that. So I'm just going to take one quick second and just take a quick water break um, uh, because I just talk a lot. My throat gets dry. One second. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Really good. Uh, appreciate all the insights so far. And, and so like Patrick was saying, uh, it's really important to take that first step and and understanding, you know, what what's out there. So I'm going to launch a uh, quick poll here. You'll see it on your screen. Um, we are uh, we want like to buy you lunch. And essentially what we want to do is, is really uh, have a have a consultative uh, conversation with you where we can look at, you know, what does your business look like today and where do you want it to be? And if Leap's a fit in there, we're certainly going to show you the aspects of Leap that are uh, can bring bring you a lot of value. Uh, but you'll see the poll on your screen. Um, we've got some time Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, if if those days aren't don't work for you, uh, you can choose another time there. Uh, but we'd really like to have that conversation with you. Our our team is very uh, well equipped to have those conversations. They speak with 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 uh, contractors every day, uh, multiple times a day, and so they really understand things, not just you know, as it relates to Leap, but but as it relates to your business in whole, and whether that be, you know, uh, lead generation, marketing, sales, production, they're, they're going to be able to certainly help uh, guide you in the right direction with your business. Um, and it, it also serves as a good audit. So as, as Patrick was saying, uh, really take this opportunity to take that first step in towards uh, improving your business um, and evolving it. Um, so I'm going to Close this poll and and uh, welcome Patrick back. Let's see here. Thanks. There we go. Awesome, uh, Patrick. Appreciate it so far. Really looking forward to you know what you have uh, coming up next for us. Well, all right, excellent. So here we go. So right back in it. So let's kind of like recap, right? So we're at this place where we're like, okay, there's all these softwares out there. The notion that I'm gonna be using one went out the window. I'm going to stop letting the softwares come to me and I'm going to start going to the softwares based on my business needs. I've, I'm, I'm thinking about how I'm breaking my business into these kind of sectors and I'm figuring out where efficiencies can be gained and how software uh, might help that. Once I have that, I'm going to think through the lens of, you know, revenue generating, cost savings, employee satisfaction. Um, you know, I'm going to go for the quick wins. You know, what are some things that I can onboard that are relatively uh, simplistic and easy to get in? So now I understand that I'm going to make these softwares part of my business. I understand that the cost means nothing. 
uh, because there's a net return on it. And I am not just saying that. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to lift the hood up on uh, my one of my businesses and kind of show you. But uh, the, the the cost means little to nothing. Ooh, sorry, I thought I turned my alerts off. The cost means little to nothing. Um, but you know, I want to set these reasonable expectations. I thought I had to have a whole plan. Like I thought I had to clear out like a month so I can onboard something, and we just didn't have the time to do it. But it's refreshing to think that all I need to think about is do I have the time to do the first step in the process, right? And then will I have the time to do the second step and the third step? Because, you know, hey, maybe Patrick's right. Maybe I, I thought I'd have more downtime in fall, but I won't, ready? So the last kind of thing for people that are kind of stuck in a place where it's like, how do I do this? What do I do? Is I think it's still that change factor. It's like, wh why change if what I'm doing is working, right? Why would I change if what I'm doing is working? And I, this is a perfect picture. If I want to call somebody right now, all three of these work fine. And, you know, in looking at them, they all have their advantages and their disadvantages, right? Even like, you know, I, I'm trying to think about efficiencies. I just want to call somebody. If, you know, if I know the number, uh, you know, the phone on the left, I, I mean, I don't have to worry about my phone being dead. I don't have to worry about my, you know, my battery dying or, you know, my screen cracking. Right, I don't have to worry about cell phone signal. Right, the one on the right, I don't have to worry about. I mean, my numbers are right there. I can just punch the button real easy. Four four three two seven one five two two one. Right, I can just pound them. I don't have to go in. I don't have to unlock my phone and type my password in three times and then go to my contacts. I mean, th these are the selling stories that people created. I need reliability. I mean, mine's reliable. I'm going to stay with this phone over here, Rotary. And then these phones came out, and we fought that, and then we're on these. I'm like, no, I don't need all that complicated stuff. I like seeing my numbers and die on them. Why would I text message somebody when I could just call them? I mean, it takes longer to write the message than it does to just pick up the phone, and it's more personal. We don't change because things aren't working. We just evolve. It's an evolution, and that's the biggest thing. We're not ready to change what we're doing. We don't know why we should change what we're doing. What we're doing is working. Yeah, no crap. The rotary phone still works. Plug the thing in, fire away. And I promise somebody in the world still using the thing, and they're sitting there thinking that anybody's got a cell phone is a knucklehead and change for the sake of changing. You're not changing anything. You're just evolving the way you do something. They're all phones. They all have strengths. Right? I promise you, you never sat there on a rotary phone and said, hey, you're breaking up. Hey, you're breaking up. Right? So, I mean, they all have strengths. So, you're just evolving your process. I, I, love, I love this picture because this is my daughter. This is Elena. I put it on here to give you guys a little bit of a family feel, but more importantly is the story behind it. This is Elena when she's, I don't know, what is she, probably three months old. And this is Elena. She's eight. When I look at Elena, I've never seen her change a day in her life because I look at her every single day and she's always looked the exact same to me. I never made the decision to change her. She never made the decision to change. When she looks in the mirror, see she, she, she sees the same person every day just as I do. I can't see, I never saw, I never changed from 16 year old Patrick to 42 year old Patrick. It's a slow progression. It's an evolution. It's only looking at where you've gone versus where you were that you can see the magnitude of change. When I look at these two people, I see totally different people, especially in Elaine. I see a massive transformation, a massive change. Never made the decision to change her once, and she's never been able to see the change by looking in the mirror. She doesn't look in the mirror and be like, oh, my God, I've changed so much because it's incremental, right? There's no old way and there's no new way. There's just the current way. Well, we're still doing it the old way, but we're going to still be doing it the new way. What do you mean old way, new way? That's like old normal, new normal. There, sooner or later, there's just normal, right? And then other times we don't have the choice to change. Things change because something or someone changed. If cash goes by the wayside, I can't take cash anymore. If Bank of America decides they don't want to give their users checks anymore, then I can't take checks anymore. So sometimes things change 
not because of choice, but because it's necessary. This, this river carved this canyon. The canyon didn't make the choice to change. The animals didn't make the choice to change it. It just changes. So as the market changes, we just change along with it. You don't, sometimes you don't even have the choice. You just have to do it. You just look around one day and you're just a different company. <clears throat> I want to give you guys something concrete. We're winding down. Uh, it's one, one, we're th about 30, 30, 38 minutes in. So I'm going to go through this fast. You know, I know a lot of that is kind of an, an ideology of, you know, okay, great. So I'm not changing anything. I'm just evolving the way I'm doing something. I'm not telling you to change your selling process or change the way you measure or change the way you do your human resources or change the way you manage your customers or your field production. I'm telling you to evolve the process, which means taking what you're currently doing and bringing more things to the table. It's just like putting another dish on the table at Thanksgiving. It's still Thanksgiving dinner. It didn't change it. Even if you set a bowl of spaghetti down, you're like, hey, we just got better, right? Now we got turkey and spaghetti. Like it's, you know, it's, it's still Thanksgiving. You don't change it. It's still production. It's still sales, right? It's still human resources. You're just evolving. This is New Look's logo. I want to tell you guys a little bit about New Look, um, you know, uh, because I think it's probably more relevant to you than my experience uh, at Leap. So I want to tell you about New Look and everything I'll say is just God's honest truth. Um, uh, I only, it's the only way I go. So I just, this is an evolution. We just redid our logo. We didn't have to change it. I don't know that it drove revenue. I don't know that there, there was definitely no cost savings because I paid a lot of money to have somebody do it. So why did I do it? Employee satisfaction. Just update it. I feel like my customers needed to see it. The old logo seemed a little bit dated. You know, so we changed it. But did we really change it or did we just evolve it? So you might see a change, but throughout the process, it's funny how much of an evolution it was. We maintained the integrity of the home. You know, we maintained our name. We maintained the colors for the most part. Slightly different upgrade on the colors. But we just evolved it. We just evolved it to a better story internally. And, you know, I don't know. It, it doesn't have a net return. Is there a measurable impact to the business? No. Do I feel great about it? Yes, I do. I love it. Because I'm not in the business just for dollars and cents. I'm in the business to feel good about what I'm doing. Do my employees love it? Man, they loved it. We had a huge brand unveil. It was just awesome. Makes them feel great about the company they're working for. Does that pay dividends? It does. So again, just change it doesn't have to happen because you need to do it. Sometimes it just happens. Our first, our brand value, simplify and automate everything possible to cultivate a better experience. That's what we do. New Look birthed Leap. We built it internally because there was no, there wasn't, there wasn't a product out there that needed, that did what we needed to do. And we used lots of them and we searched for it. We had our ear to the ground. There was nothing. So we had to build the thing. And when we built it, it was so good and we put so much effort into it, it's cliche, but we couldn't keep it internal. So Leap was birthed from it. Like a lot of great softwares, most softwares start as proprietary, which means a business built them and then they take them and they spin them out because they're worth a lot in the open market. People need them. They solved an industry pain point. Simplify and automate everything possible to cultivate a better experience. It doesn't say onboard technology. It says simplify and automate everything possible to cultivate a better experience. Experience for whom? Experience for our customers and experience for our employees. These are the softwares that we currently use by name. We use Leap, MarketShark, MailChimp, Hover and EagleView, Paycom, Lever. Paycom is our HR software. Lever is our recruiting software. We use Microsoft Office, QuickBooks, Ignite is our server, Basecamp, GroupMe, Zoom, and then there's a variety of vendor softwares, everything from ordering, um, you, know, uh, 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 you know, and financing and just other softwares, training softwares, right? So we use all these softwares. And believe it or not, we still have some holes. We still have some holes. Leap, I counted today, and there might even be some softwares in the business that I don't know are being utilized, but I counted eight today, and I know we're implementing two more. These also don't include things like our phone systems and so forth. And we're evaluating those as well. Why? Because we just want to make them better. They work. The phone systems work. 
but we can't get some level of data that we want to get out of them, so we're exploring a new phone system. Right? And we have a reasonable timeline to do it. And the first step is figuring out what the what we need to do to make the current process better, and then figuring out what products are out there to help us. What's the cost of all these softwares? I couldn't tell you. It's probably a ton. I mean, all of these, I mean, some of them, we might, some of them, maybe $10,000 $10, a year, or, you know, I don't even know. I mean, it's tons. It's probably six, six figures, right, on an annual basis. I couldn't tell you. But I can tell you exactly what would happen to my business if we lost any one of them. I mean, when I try to think about one of these softwares going down, and I'm like, okay, so if I had to shoot one, like, which one would I, which one would I knock off? Some of them could potentially go by the wayside and we would be able to be just fine. Um, we'd lose some efficiency or whatever. Other ones, I don't even know how I, I don't even know what I'd do. I'd go, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be pandemonium. So the real cost to me would be productivity. You do not realize that until you implement these things into your business. That's why software businesses are so beautiful. Because once you start using them, I mean the lifetime value of them is just so high. I mean the once you start using them, they become part of you. They're equally as important as any key, 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 key cog in the wheel. So, you know, I mean, I just, I, I don't, I'm not telling you not to look at the cost. I, I just, I know cost is relevant, but the cost of not having these softwares would far outweigh the cost of having them. I, I can't even, you know, I can't even imagine, you know, being in a position where we're doing everything on, you know, um, as, you know, spreadsheets and things of that nature. It just, I couldn't go back to that now that I've come this far. Remember, we haven't changed anything, just like my daughter hasn't changed. I never made the decision to do anything, right? We just, it's an evolution. I'm almost along for the ride. Yeah, maybe my hand's behind the wheel, but the car's kind of driving itself to a point, right? I mean, I have employees, they have ideas, they want to make things better. I have problems. We go to solve a problem. If solving a problem means implementing a software, I didn't change. I'm just evolving my business. That's what I do. I own businesses and I walk around and I try to make things better. So it's an evolution. I never once looked in the mirror and said, wow, we've really grown as a company. But when I look at the company we are now, 100 employees, talking about New Look, 100 employees doing $30 million versus when we started three employees doing $300,000. I mean, that's a transformation. It's a massive change, but I never, there was never one day that we did one thing that totally set us off to the stratosphere. It was constantly looking at how we can make things better. Same stories, it rings true at Leap. There's not one thing, it's the evolution of the business. So, you know, just again, look at your processes, think about how you can make them better. You know, don't, the notion that you're not good at tech is unacceptable. And don't think about it versus, it's not change. Don't look for something. You're not looking for time. You're not figuring out how to navigate change. You're just doing it. So that would be my advice. Um, so, you know, just, you know, start doing it. <laughs> awesome, Patrick. Really appreciate it. I'm going to, we've got a, some questions here. Uh, and if you have a question for Patrick, please type it in the question section. Uh, while we do, or before we do that, I'm going to launch another poll real quick. And again, if you're interested in making that first step today, and uh, learning more about Leap and actually you know, getting more of a consultative uh, session with one of our uh, account executives, please go ahead and, and select a time. And if you, uh, you know, book that uh, this week, we want to buy you lunch, so we will uh, send you a gift card to, uh, for you to order in. Uh, so give everybody one more minute there. Uh, Patrick, I wanted to ask you, we had a question come in. Uh, you listed a lot of different software there. Um, if you had to choose one, uh you know where would you start oh um so my mind is racing and i was actually already thinking down that vein because i was talking about what happens if i lost one of those um that, that's a hard question to answer because of leap and, and leap is uh you know it's my software so i don't want that to skew my answer <laughs> um but i think about that and we do because you know, all softwares have a period of downtime where they don't work for a period of time or something like that. Um, I would think, um, 
Oh, I hate to say this, man. I don't even want to say this. I, 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 I'd say I'd probably say I'd probably say for me it'd be leap. But let me explain why, it, it, because that's so not humble. Um, I, I think that you know for us with our salespeople the way they are, you know our salespeople have all been trained the selling process on leap. I mean it houses everything that we need to sell. So, you know, it's all, Tom, I mean, it's all of our resources, it's our contracts, it's how we process payments, it's how we get our financing done. So if it were to go down tomorrow, my sales would stop. So I would have to spin back into something to try to get sales back up, which would require retraining, which would be revenue loss. So that's why I would say that, like if my paycom went down or something like that, like my employees would still would still show up, like, you know, even if, we had to miss a payroll or something like that. I could still, I could still do that. If revenue stops, if selling stops, that's that's the, that's the scary part. So I yeah. would, you know, if people call in to schedule estimates, I could technically write them down on a piece of paper, right? I mean, I can't. My selling process would crumble without that. So for me, it would be that, but that's only because we're on it. Um, we're only yeah. on it. For somebody else, it might be it might be different uh, if they, you know, if they have a greater a greater voice. Yeah, I appreciate it. I feel like I set you up there. That was uh... yeah, I feel, I feel a little set up, but again, oh, it's, it's only because I, I already have it implemented. And I talked a lot about this is, you know, you don't realize the value of some of these things until you're reliant on them. You know, then the value is really solidified. So you start thinking about what would happen if you lost them. Um, and, you know, for us, like I said, our selling process would start, which I'm a revenue, I, I think revenue first. So as long as sales are coming in the door, we can figure anything out. The moment sales stop, um, that'd be a problem for me. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm going to hand it back over to Kelly. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Uh, so I've got a couple more questions that have come into that uh, questions box. So again, if anyone's got anything out there, feel free to drop that in. Uh, first up, I've got a question coming in from Tracy. Um, what would you recommend as, you know, a good way to find out what competitors or, or, you know, maybe some other folks in the industry are using if you're not like, you know, are having those conversations or things like that? Well, I think the logo, I mean, you can go and look, I mean, it's no secret that like people are using Eagle View, people are using, you know, QuickBooks. I mean, I, because they, those softwares are so kind of renowned in the space that you can kind of just, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, so to speak. So, I mean, that's probably the easiest way. I mean, you know, another way is through um, through the vendors themselves. I mean, if you call the vendors and you just, you know, if you have the logos, but we gave them to you all on the screen. I mean, those are all pretty much industry icon logos. But if you go to those logos and you reach out to them in sales and say, hey, can you tell me five people that are using it in my area? Can you give me five referrals? I mean, they'll give you referrals that are people, you know, in, in, I, I would think that are in your area. Um, and then, you know, the rest is, again, it's just kind of keeping your ear to the ground. Like, you know, uh, distribution centers are great, you know, like, so where have you buy your product from, if you're going like, maybe like, if like an ABC and all side, a beacon of, you know, uh, any place, um, you know, uh, you can, um, you could talk to them and, you know, your sales representatives within those, those and say, Hey, what are some of the, you know, what are the creme de la creme softwares that people are using? Perfect. That's great. Um, okay, Tracy, I hope that answers your question. Uh, we've got another one that's coming in from, from Drew. So Drew asks, as an owner, what is the case for sales reps to adopt new software when they're already experiencing success versus a tra more traditional selling tactic? Yeah, did, you, did you say the taste? I'm sorry, the, uh, the, yeah, the case, the use case. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, so it's not good. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's remember I said it's all realistic expectations. I mean, you you got some guy that's been doing it this way, and he's already selling. I mean, you already know the narrative. That's why we asked the question. I I don't have different people working for me that other people have working for them. You know, when I try to bring in a new software and train people on it, it's not like, like hurrah, something new for me to do today that I can't see the value in. So it's not, you know, it's 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 it's, it's you. I mean, as the business owner, that's the thing. I mean, you're you're making the decision. So you know, I just it's. It's now, if I were to go take it away from them now, Drew, I mean, they'd hit bended knee. Let me, I mean, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you, like just, at New Look, we had people leave, salespeople, and, and when we had, before Leap was even a product, and we had it internally at New Look, we would have employees that would leave our organization and go work for competitive organizations. 
It was those business owners that called me that said, what kind of software are you using over there? These guys say that you guys got something awesome. So those are the same people that I had to shove the software down their throat to get them to use it when it worked because it was something new. You know, it was something new and it was perceived as a change, not evolution. So, but then when they get a taste for it, that was one of the reasons that we brought the software to market because people were calling us saying that they'd be very interested in it. Because mm -hmm. our employees that went to other organizations uh, uh, pushed it up to them. So I, I hope that answers your question, but remember, at the level setting the expectation. I mean, when you bring it in, we know it's going to be challenging. We know it's going to be hard. We're going to be with you the whole way. And, you know, we're going to move it slow. So we're not changing anything today. We're going to keep doing things the way we do them. And we're going to slow roll this and implement. Perfect. Thanks for that. Um, okay, it looks like we've got one more question here from Sam. Uh, you had mentioned earlier in the presentation about like the kind of roadmap and doing what you can, when you can, to, to implementing the new software. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what the onboarding process looks like at least? Like, what, like and then how would you go about, um, like if you have any training recommendations for, how, for implementing LEAP and getting that onboarded? So here, here's what I can tell you. I mean, so we use Ask Nicely as our survey tool. You get what's called a net promoter score, and our net promoter score is uh, really high. And that's not because our software is really easy to onboard. It's because our people stay with you the whole time. So, you know, with, with, with Leap, you know, our model is uh, in handheld onboarding. So it is building a roadmap that works for each company in each customer specifically. Some people won't use the product for six months. And some people will use it in three weeks, two weeks. It, it, it's really around how much time they have. But it's really funny. We'll have people that maybe don't use the product. They, they literally they bought it and they're paying for their license. They're six months in and they still don't have perceived value out of it. The time to value is not there yet. But they are committed to it because they know they want to drive that evolution within that portion of their business. And they're just, they're okay. They're, they're moving at their pace. So it's, you know, the onboarding process is we take you to the, there's just climb one step. You know, how do you move a mountain? One stone at a time. So you just climb one step. So first step, get a demo. Do you see the value in it? Do you like it? Would this change your business? Would it evolve your business? Yes, it would. Great. Get a license. Get it on. Oh, let's do a kickoff call. That's an hour. When can you do that? And that's all you got to worry about. So it's demo. Does it bring value to your business? Purchase. Dem, uh, kickoff call. And then all coming off that kickoff call, there'll be another step. And everybody moves at their own at their own state and speed. Everybody moves at their own timeline. And it's just that's just the way the world is. Everybody does things at their own pace. So. There's not like a con concrete answer for that, you know? I mean, we like to see companies onboarded with 45 days to 90 days. Um, but it's, you know, some people on board, most, some of our most successful customers have taken longer than that. So it's really about your pace. Perfect. All right. That looks like all the questions we have for now. Um, so, Pat, if you could just advance that slide one more for me. Awesome. Um, so, and and... And thanks so much, Pat, for your time today. I think this is really insightful, lots of good tips. And I like I personally think that kind of progress over perfection uh, is great sound advice to, you know, just keep doing what you can uh, and, and making it better day by day. Um, so with that, I'd like to offer it up for any closing words on, on your end before we close out today. No, again, like I said, I mean, my experience comes from a culmination of my opinions, my experiences, uh, other people's, you know, it's, being uh, the CEO of uh, both New Look and Leap have given me a pretty big network of people um, and partners uh, that provide influence and so forth. So I understand what the challenges are. I'm, I'm connected with, with users on both sides. One is I am a customer and I'm navigating through these softwares myself and trying to figure out how to make them go and work and understanding the costs and the value. But two, you know, on the Leap side, trying to bring the best service to our customers and understanding the value of it and, and and figuring out, you know, and understanding how it benefits people and having the feeling of trying to like drag them across the finish line, so to speak. So, you know, hey, listen, the, the only person that, the person that should care most about your business is you. Um, and, you know, you know what's good for your business, but most important, you, you're not changing anything. It's just an evolution. 
And I think that that, you know, uh, for Drew, you know, that's got to be your context. We're not, we're not changing the way you're doing anything. We're just, we're going to give you some support. So I, I don't, you know, humans like support. They like, um, they like help, um, no matter how well they're doing. Uh, so I think if you posture it like that and you, you know, get rid of the context of change, um, because you don't need to change anything. You just evolve. Excellent. Uh, well, thanks everyone for your time and for joining us today. Um, if you think of any questions or, or anything you'd like some assistance with after the webinar, feel free to reach out to that marketing at leap to digital .com email address. Uh, that goes directly to me, so I'm happy to help answer any questions or things like that after the webinar. Uh, again, I will be sending out a copy of the recording uh, for this after the webinar, so keep an eye out for that. And as you leave the webinar today, you'll see a short survey pop up. Um, we'd love to get your feedback on the presentation today and also hear uh, if you have any topics or things that you'd like to hear about for future sessions. We'd certainly love your feedback and input on that. Uh, so thanks again, Patrick, and everyone for joining us on the webinar today. And uh, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you so much. Yep. Take care.